we went on board uh, landing craft infantry, which were smaller ships. And about one o'clock in the morning, we headed for the for the uh, toe of Italy. And just as soon as we crossed over to Italy, the Italian government surrendered, and they went from foe to to um, ally. And. Uh, we didn't run into very much opposition at all. We ran into thousands and thousands and thousands of Italian soldiers who were giving themselves up. You got surprised of your life. You're always kind of watching your back. Uh, we were not we were not their liberators. We were their conquerors, and it's quite a different feeling. It was always one hill up and one hill down. Next hill, easy for the Germans to defend because they always had the upper hand. They had the higher ground and could look down. The, the, the roads were so narrow through the mountains that one thing slipped, slid right down the mountain, killed the whole crew. Then the engineers had to build another road. And it was damn scary because we were going up this narrow path and winding our way up the mountain, like, you know? And we came under artillery fire and mortar fire. And you could hear the fellows that were going down the mountain, you know, blew down the mountain holler. One fellow kept calling, Mama, Mama and you know that just wrenched your heart. Well that air defense was blowing up bridges. There's a, river, there's a river down that mountain, I think every two miles there's a river coming down from that mountain and we had to build, the bridges was always blown out. The engineers would go up at night and put a bridge across the river that would take in Civilian Street two years to build and they put it, put it across a big rapid flowing river in one night. Amazing. Mud. Mud. Glorious, glorious mud. And cold. And our winter clothing never caught up to us until I guess it was sometime in December. And it was just hell. And to warmth, we would take an empty shell case and we put oil and water in partway up and set a little fire in the bottom and then we got a, a blow, almost like a blowtorch. 44 winter, we were bogged down so bad in the mud that we had mules deliver our mail to us and our food, our gasoline, and we just held positions. The, the weather, that was bad, but that's not the, that wasn't your worry so much in the weather. Some damn chills. The, uh, the worry. We had no cooks per se. Uh, the cooks in the army were detailed off. If somebody wanted to cook, they'd make them a cook and they'd teach them as much as they could, and that was it. All in Italy, we never got anything except, if we're lucky, we got powdered milk, dehydrated potatoes, dehydrated mutton, bully beef. Fried, stewed, baked, mashed, bully beef, bully beef, bully beef. But the bacon was uh, beyond bacon. It came in cans about the same as a 48 ounce juice can, but it was nearly always fat. We were damn glad to get it, but it wasn't very good. The Germans were bombarding us with these moaning middies, you know, mortars that they had. That had to be, in my opinion, the most frightening weapon of World War II. And the Germans, had a, it was deadly. And you could hear the pop of the firing. You could hear the thing going up. And uh, you never knew where they were going. You'd just hear this whine coming through the air and you'd just flatten or run for a hole or whatever you can have hit the ground and hope to God it wasn't going to hit you. There's a spark in each eye. Fear. And you'd look at all these other guys. They all had the same thing, spark in each eye. And there was a scream of an 88 armor-piercing shell coming and hit us. They seemed to get there before they'd started. They were extraordinarily quick. And a uh, a pair of 88s firing at you where it was a really disturbing experience. The sound of those 88 millimeter solid shots hit, 
ricocheting off the bank was one I will never forget. One time we were under a German barrage, and this was at night when daylight broke. We were in an olive grove. The ground looked like it had been plowed. The trees, there wasn't a, a full branch left on the tree. I can remember going along roads on my hands and knees with a bayonet, <laughs> probing for mines. Every, every heartbeat is death. You're care, scared to walk. There's millions of them, millions of these bloody mines. You know, they had mines scattered all over when they went to pick one up and they tripped the other ones. Suddenly, the whole minefield went up. And I was literally sitting on my tank, dodging parts. When it's over, we got 26 blankets put out in the ground and tried to match the men. I said, come on, you gotta help me. We gotta get out of here. So finally, he picks me up and all these son of a gun, he's picking me up and handling me with his right arm. He's got a shrapnel in here. I don't know how he did it. And I held his cheeks like this blocking the holes in his face so that he could get a drag on the cigarette. Another thing that you were scared of, you got wounded and uh, you went to uh, the hospital and you ended up at a reinforcement unit. They may send you to another unit. And that's one thing I never wanted to get, uh, get sent to another unit. You could smell death. You could smell it. It got into your nostrils and into your mouth. And we were a mobile unit and we would operate them operate on them, and we would only do priority cases. But we had all these young boys, they were all so young, and all, they'd cry over their lost legs, you know. And 